Welcome to the Dr. Izzy's Medical Podcast Channel. Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia Acute Lymphoblastic Leukemia, ALL, is a cancer of the lymphoid line of blood cells characterized by the development of large numbers of immature lymphocytes. Symptoms may include feeling tired, pale skin color, fever, easy bleeding or bruising, enlarged lymph nodes, or bone pain. As an acute leukemia, all progresses rapidly and is typically fatal within weeks or months if left untreated. In most cases, the cause is unknown. Genetic risk factors may include Down syndrome, Lee Fraumeni syndrome, or neurofibromatosis type 1. Environmental risk factors may include significant radiation exposure or prior chemotherapy. Evidence regarding electromagnetic fields or pesticides is unclear. Some hypothesize that an abnormal immune response to a common infection may be a trigger. The underlying mechanism involves multiple genetic mutations that results in rapid cell division. The excessive immature lymphocytes in the bone marrow interfere with the production of new red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Diagnosis is typically based on blood tests and bone marrow examination. ALL is typically treated initially with chemotherapy aimed at bringing about remission. This is then followed by further chemotherapy typically over a number of years. Treatment usually also include intrathecal chemotherapy since systemic chemotherapy can have limited penetration into the central nervous system and the central nervous system is a common site for relapse of acute lymphoblastic leukemia. Signs and symptoms. Initial symptoms can be nonspecific, particularly in children. Over 50% of children with leukemia had one or more of five features, a liver one can feel, a spleen one can feel, pale complexion, fever and bruising. Additionally, recurrent infections, feeling tired, arm or leg pain, and enlarged lymph nodes can be prominent features. The B symptoms, such as fever, night sweats, and weight loss, are often present as well. Central nervous system symptoms such as cranial neuropathies due to meningeal infiltration are identified in less than 10% of adults and less than 5% of children, particularly mature B-cell ALL, which is Burkitt leukemia, at presentation. The signs and symptoms of ALL are variable and include Generalized weakness and feeling tired. Anemia. Dizziness. Headache, vomiting, lethargy, neck stiffness, or cranial nerve palsies. Frequent or unexplained fever and infection. Weight loss and or loss of appetite. Excessive and unexplained bruising. Bone pain, joint pain. Breathlessness. Enlarged lymph nodes, liver, and or spleen. Pitting edema in the lower limbs and or abdomen. Petechiae, which are tiny red spots or lines in the skin due to low platelet levels. Testicular enlargement. Mediastinal mass. The cancerous cell in ALL is the lymphoblast. Normal lymphoblasts develop into mature, infection-fighting B-cells or T-cells, also called lymphocytes. Signals in the body control the number of lymphocytes so neither too few nor too many are made. In ALL, both the normal development of some lymphocytes and the control over the number of lymphoid cells become defective. ALL emerges when a single lymphoblast gains many mutations to genes that affect blood cell development and proliferation. In childhood ALL, this process begins at conception with the inheritance of some of these genes. These genes, in turn, increase the risk that more mutations will occur in developing lymphoid cells. Certain genetic syndromes, like Down syndrome, have the same effect. Environmental risk factors are also needed to help create enough genetic mutations to cause disease. Evidence for the role of the environment is seen in childhood ALL among twins, where only 10-15% to of both genetically identical twins get all. Since they have the same genes, different environmental exposures explain why one twin gets all and the other does not. Several genetic syndrome also carry increased risk of ALL. These include, Down syndrome, Fanconi anemia, Bloom syndrome, X-linked agammaglobulinemia, severe combined immunodeficiency, Schwachmann-Diamond syndrome, Kosman syndrome, neurofibromatosis type 1, ataxia telangiectasia, paroxysmal nocturnal hemoglobinuria, and Lee Fraumeni syndrome. High levels of radiation exposure from nuclear fallout is a known risk factor for developing leukemia. Evidence whether lesser radiation, as from X-ray imaging during pregnancy, increases risk of disease remains inconclusive. Studies that have identified an association between X-ray imaging during pregnancy and ALL found only a slightly increased risk. Exposure to strong electromagnetic radiation from power lines has also been associated with a slightly increased risk of ALL. There is some evidence that a common infection, such as influenza, may indirectly promote the emergence of ALL. 
The delayed infection hypothesis states that ALL results from an abnormal immune response to infection in a person with genetic risk factors. Delayed development of the immune system due to limited disease exposure may result in excessive production of lymphocytes and increased mutation rate during an illness. Diagnosis. Diagnosing ALL begins with a thorough medical history, physical examination, complete blood count, and blood smears. While many symptoms of ALL can be found in common illnesses, persistent or unexplained symptoms raise suspicion of cancer. Because many features on the medical history and exam are not specific to ALL, further testing is often needed. A large number of white blood cells and lymphoblasts in the circulating blood can be suspicious for ALL because they indicate a rapid production of lymphoid cells in the marrow. The higher these numbers typically point to a worse prognosis. While white blood cell counts at initial presentation can vary significantly, circulating lymphoblast cells are seen on peripheral blood smears in the majority of cases. A bone marrow biopsy provides conclusive proof of ALL, typically with greater than 20% of all cells being leukemic lymphoblasts. A lumbar puncture, also known as a spinal tap, can determine whether the spinal column and brain have been invaded. Brain and spinal column involvement can be diagnosed either through confirmation of leukemic cells in the lumbar puncture or through clinical signs of CNS leukemia as described above. Laboratory tests that might show abnormalities include blood count, kidney function, electrolyte, and liver enzyme tests. Immunophenotyping. In addition to cell morphology and cytogenetics, immunophenotyping, a laboratory technique used to identify proteins that are expressed on their cell surface, is a key component in the diagnosis of ALL. The preferred method of immunophenotyping is through flow cytometry. In the malignant lymphoblasts of ALL, expression of terminal deoxynucleotidal transferase on the cell surface can help differentiate malignant lymphocyte cells from reactive lymphocytes, white blood cells that are reacting normally to an infection in the body. On the other hand, myeloperoxidase, a marker for the myeloid lineage, is typically not expressed. Because precursor B cell and precursor T cells look the same, Immunophenotyping can help differentiate the subtype of ALL and the level of maturity of the malignant white blood cells. The subtypes of ALL is determined by immunophenotype and according to the stages of maturation. Cytogenetics Cytogenetic analysis has shown different proportions and frequencies of genetic abnormalities in cases of all from different age groups. This information is particularly valuable for classification and can in part explain the different prognoses of these groups. In regards to genetic analysis, cases can be stratified according to ploidy, a number of sets of chromosomes in the cell, and specific genetic abnormalities, such as translocations. Hyperdiploid cells are defined as cells with more than 50 chromosomes, while hypodiploid are defined as cells with less than 44 chromosomes. Hyperdiploid cases tend to carry a good prognosis while hypodiploid cases do not. Classification. French-American-British system. Historically, prior to 2008, all was classified morphologically using the French-American-British, FAB, system that heavily relied on morphological assessment. The FAB system takes into account information on size, cytoplasm, nucleoli, basophilia, color of cytoplasm, and vacuolation, bubble-like properties. Treatment. The aim of treatment is to induce a lasting remission, defined as the absence of detectable cancer cells in the body. Over the past several decades, there have been strides to increase the efficacy of treatment regimens, resulting in increased survival rates. Possible treatments for acute leukemia include chemotherapy, steroids, radiation therapy, intensive combined treatments, targeted therapy, and or growth factors. Chemotherapy. Chemotherapy is the initial treatment of choice, and most people with ALL receive a combination of medications. There are no surgical options because of the body-wide distribution of the malignant cells. In general, cytotoxic chemotherapy for ALL combines multiple antileukemic drugs tailored to each person. Chemotherapy for ALL consists of three phases, remission induction, intensification, and maintenance therapy. Due to the presence of central nervous system involvement in 10 to 40% of adults with ALL at diagnosis, most providers start central nervous system prophylaxis and treatment during the induction phase, and continue it during the consolidation-slash-intensification period. Adult chemotherapy regimens mimic those of childhood ALL, however, are linked with a higher risk of disease relapse with chemotherapy alone. It should be known that two subtypes of ALL require special considerations when it comes to selecting an appropriate treatment regimen in adults with all. B-cell all is often associated with cytogenetic abnormalities, which require aggressive therapy consisting of brief, high-intensity regimens. 
T cell ALL responds to cyclophosphamide containing agents the most. Radiation therapy. Radiation therapy is used on painful bony areas, in high disease burdens, or as part of the preparations for a bone marrow transplant. In the past, physicians commonly utilized radiation in the form of whole brain radiation for central nervous system prophylaxis, to prevent the occurrence and or recurrence of leukemia in the brain. Recent studies showed that central nervous system chemotherapy provided results as favorable but with fewer developmental side effects. As a result, the use of whole brain radiation has been more limited. Most specialists in adult leukemia have abandoned the use of radiation therapy for central nervous system prophylaxis, instead using intrathecal chemotherapy. Biological therapy. Selection of biological targets on the basis of their combinatorial effects on the leukemic lymphoblasts can lead to clinical trials for improvement in the effects of ALL treatment. Tyrosine kinase inhibitors, such as imatinib, are often incorporated into the treatment plan for people with BCR ABL1 plus Philadelphia chromosome positive ALL. However, this subtype of ALL is frequently resistant to the combination of chemotherapy and TKIs and allogeneic stem cell transplantation is often recommended upon relapse. Blinitumumab, a CD19 CD3 by specific monoclonal murine antibody, currently shows promise as a novel pharmacotherapy. By engaging the CD3 T cell with a CD19 receptor on B cells, it triggers a response to induce the release of inflammatory cytokines, cytotoxic proteins, and the proliferation of T cells to kill CD19 B cells. Immunotherapy. Chimeric antigen receptors have been developed as a promising immunotherapy for ALL. This technology uses a single-chain variable fragment designed to recognize the cell surface marker CD19 as a method of treating ALL. CD19 is a molecule found on all B cells and can be used as a means of distinguishing a potentially malignant B cell population. In this therapy, mice are immunized with the CD19 antigen and produce anti-CD19 antibodies. Hybridomas developed from mouse spleen cells fused to a myeloma cell line can be developed as a source for the cDNA encoding the CD19-specific antibody. The cDNA is sequenced and the sequence encoding the variable heavy and variable light chains of these antibodies are cloned together using a small peptide linker. This resulting sequence encodes the SCFE. This can be cloned into a transgene, encoding what will become the endodomain of the car. Varying arrangements of subunits serve as the endodomain, but they generally consist of the hinge region that attaches to the SCFE, a transmembrane region, the intracellular region of a costimulatory molecule such as CD28, and the intracellular domain of CD3 zeta containing ITAM repeats. Other sequences frequently included are 41BB and OX40. The final transgene sequence, containing the SCFE and endodomain sequences is then inserted into immune effector cells that are obtained from the person and expanded in vitro. In trials these have been a type of T-cell capable of cytotoxicity. Relapsed ALL. Typically, people who experience a relapse in their ALL after initial treatment have a poorer prognosis than those who remain in complete remission after induction therapy. It is unlikely that recurrent leukemia will respond favorably to the standard chemotherapy regimen that was initially implemented, and instead, these people should be trialed on reinduction chemotherapy followed by allogeneic bone marrow transplantation. These people in relapse may also receive blinitumumab, as it has shown to increase remission rates and overall survival rates, without increased toxic effects. Low-dose palliative radiation may also help reduce the burden of tumor inside or outside the central nervous system and alleviate some symptoms. Recently, there has also been evidence and approval of use for disadenib, a tyrosine kinase inhibitor. It has shown efficacy in cases of people with pH 1 positive and imatinib-resistant ALL, but more research needs to be done on long-term survival and time to relapse. Side effects. Chemotherapies or stem cell transplantations may require a platelet transfusion to prevent bleeding. Moreover, patients undergoing a stem cell transplantation can develop a graft-versus-host disease. It was evaluated whether mesenchymal stromal cells can be used to prevent a GVHD. The evidence is very uncertain about the therapeutic effect of mesenchymal stromal cells to treat graft-versus-host diseases after a stem cell transplantation on the all-cause mortality and complete disappear of chronic acute graft-versus-host diseases. Mesenchymal stromal cells may result in little to no difference in the all-cause mortality, relapse of malignant disease and incidence of acute and chronic graft-versus-host diseases if they are used for prophylactic reason. Supportive therapy adding physical exercises to the standard treatment for adult patients with hematological malignancies like ALL may result in little to no difference in mortality, the quality of life, and physical functioning. 
these exercises may result in a slight reduction in depression. Furthermore, aerobic physical exercises probably reduce fatigue. The evidence is very uncertain about the effect on anxiety and serious adverse events. Inserting the DNA into the effector cell can be accomplished by several methods. Most commonly, this is done using a lentivirus that encodes the transgene. Pseudotyped, self-inactivating lentiviruses are an effective method for the stable insertion of a desired transgene into the target cell. Other methods include electroporation and transfection, but these are limited in their efficacy as transgene expression diminishes over time. The gene-modified effector cells are then transplanted back into the person. Typically this process is done in conjunction with a conditioning regimen such as cyclophosphamide, which has been shown to potentiate the effects of infused T-cells. This effect has been attributed to making an immunologic space within which the cells populate. The process as a whole result in an effector cell, typically a T-cell, that can recognize a tumor cell antigen in a manner that is independent of the major histocompatibility complex and which can initiate a cytotoxic response. In 2017 tisingen leclacel was approved by the FDA as a CAR T therapy for people with acute B-cell lymphoblastic leukemia who did not respond adequately to other treatments or have relapsed. In a 22-day process, the drug is customized for each person. T-cells purified from each person are modified by a virus that inserts genes that encode a chimeric antigen receptor into their DNA, one that recognizes leukemia cells. Thank you for listening Dr. Izzy's medical podcast series. If you want to support this project please subscribe the channel and like this video. Thank you.